Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today is the day we have launched the Patreon reward for November, which is Solver in Sudoku Land, a short story by Demono, which uh, we think you'll enjoy a lot. It's, it's quite whimsical, but that's Demono's way, I think. Um, it's good fun. There are, I think, six Sudokus to solve in total to get to the the phrase that pays at the end, well, the phrase that gets you in with a chance of, uh, of a prize and of being on the Scroll of Honour. Now, we have not yet released the Scroll of Honour for October's hunt, but we have it in hand. It will happen soon. Um, and very well done to everybody who's done that. What we have released are all the videos to all the solutions of all the puzzles in the Trick or Treat, including hidden puzzles and uh, they are available on our Patreon to the $3 and above per month subscribers. It's such great value. I mean, that's basically an extra 20 odd videos. Thank you so much to the Skunk Works for that. Thank you so much to Demono for this month's hunt. Um, and do check it out on Patreon. I will, I will save promoting the um, apps till the end because this is an arrow sudoku we're going to have a look at today um, let's and it's from Aspartagus I love Aspartagus's puzzles one of my favorite constructors there are a few but Aspartagus definitely amongst them making asparagus perhaps my favorite vegetable that and celery um, and and I will explain the very simple rule set that we're working with today um, and I will then explain the name of the puzzle. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. We're using one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box, like we do almost every day. Digits on an arrow sum to the digit in the circle of that arrow. So those three together added up make the number in there, and those two make the same number, and those two make the same number. Digits can repeat on arrows if allowed by normal Sudoku rules. Um, and that is the rule set we'll be dealing with. Now, why is this puzzle called Butterfly? Well, if you tilt your head slightly to the side, you may be able to discern that immediately. But there is a version of the puzzle with a few extra lightly drawn lines and a kind of backbone of the butterfly here. Um, entomologists will tell me what, or lepidopterists will tell me what that is actually called. Um, that kind of head through to the tail of the butterfly with its wings in a kind of very light yellow here so I will provide a link to that in tiny URL um, but a I don't want to confuse myself and b I think most people would rather play this as an arrow sudoku let me know if I'm wrong um, anyway so the first link under the puzzle is to this version which I am going to attempt so I'm going to do that now let's restart the clock and let's tackle this beautiful butterfly. Let's get cracking. So, a good thing to do in arrow sudokus with lots of arrows is to look for areas of concentration of arrows. Um, Yeah, I mean, at least one of these digits must be at least a six. But that's not... Hmm, I thought that might put a nine in one of those cells for sure. Ah, we've got five... Right, the, col the central... Well, just as we looked at the central axis of the butterfly, let's look at the central axes of the puzzle. Row five has got five arrow cells in it. Column five has got five arrow cells. The important thing about those five arrow cells is they are only relating to two circles each. And the five arrow cells have to add up to at least 15. That's the triangular number for five, and there must be five different digits. The minimum they could be is one, two, three, four, five, adds up to 15. Now, the maximum those five digits can add up to is 17, and that's because of the circles they're attached to, which have to be different numbers. And we now know these numbers add up to at least 15, and it could be 16 or 17. And the same is true for the circles attached to these numbers, and that's these two. And that means all of these three digits are from 6, 7, 8, 9. And if there is a 6 in play... 
it must be accompanied by a nine in each of it, well, in whichever pair it's in. It can't be in both pairs. You can't put a six there, or both of those would have to be a nine. Actually, I suspect you can't... No, I was going to say maybe you can't put a seven here. I'm wrong. You could have eight there and nine there, and I think it would work. So that's not a six. Oh, and one of these is definitely a nine. Because if there is a 6, that goes with a 9. And if there isn't a 6, this is a 7, 8, 9, triple. Okay. Yeah, okay. One of the other things that's good to look for in these puzzles is kind of gaps where high digits can go. And there are some places in this puzzle that I've noticed. Oh, well... There aren't as many as I thought, but I mean, when I was highlighting those six, they couldn't any of them be nine, for instance. But it's row five and column five again, isn't it? Where can nines go in these columns? And the answers, because all of the arrows are at least two cells long, is only in those places. And do you see, we've just ruled out this one from being a nine, because we've said one of these has to be a nine. So once that's not a nine, now we can place two digits in the grid in nearly the first three minutes of solving, which for an Aspartagus puzzle, I'm happy with. Now that means there's a nine in one of those cells. I don't know, I was going to say this must be at least a five. That's not Well, is it necessarily true? Yeah, I think it is. If you had a four or a three in here, with a four, and the same is true for three, one of the features is that the two-digit arrows coming from it would have to be made up of the same two numbers, one and three in the case of a four. And if you put one and three in there, you couldn't put either of them here because both of those cells see that one. Ah, bleh. this, if it was a four, could have a two-two pair on one of the arrows. Okay. <laughs> There's a bit of crazy pencil marking. No, it can't be a nine because we know nine's in one of those. Okay, well. Hmm. Just need to be a bit careful sometimes with the rule about potential repeats along an arrow. Because it's always very tempting to think of all the cells on an arrow must be different because so many of them are in straight lines or confined within boxes. Now, where are we now? I haven't really got very far, actually. I still feel like this is probably a nine. Mm. Nine's in one of those cells in box one. One of those in box two. It's one of those in box nine. There's a lot of symmetry in this unsurprising butterfly, I suppose. Um, okay, I've given up thinking about nines. I didn't want to think about eights because I don't think I've definitely got eight confined within one of these. You could have a six, seven pair there and a nine there. But, ah, Right, I think it's almost axiomatic that eight can't go on a three cell arrow. I mean, neither can seven when they all see each other. So in fact, none of these arrows have an eight or a seven on. But then I was wondering where eight can go in the column. And at first, I think there are a few answers and they're all of these, which aren't on three cell arrows. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, it's beautiful why it can't go here. If eight was on this arrow, look what happens. This has to be an eight one pair, making a nine in the circle. But eight one there means there's no one on this arrow. And the only way you can have a three cell arrow where they all see each other without a one is two, three, and four, and then that adds up to nine as well, and you get a clash of nines. 
So there's no eight in those digits. So eight in this column is in one of those two. Eight in row five in exactly the same way is in one of those two. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Because if you don't put eight here, you have to put it in both of those cells. And look what happens on those arrows. Eight plus one, that's fine, equals nine in both cases. That is not fine. Isn't that incredible? A Spartacus, stand up right now and take a bow. Because that is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful butterfly. I do love butterflies anyway. Right, now we're in business. Because the only other place... What I was doing was saying if 8 wasn't in the central cell, where was it in those rows and columns? I, I don't know if I point out, obviously the 8, 1 and 2, 3, 4 trick applies here as well. Anyway, that's lovely. So we decided that ruling 8 out of the central circle, central cell, would mean it was kind of dead because we'd have to put it in both, oops, both those places and both these would be 9s. So it is there. That takes eight out of these, which are now a six, seven, nine triple. And suddenly this, this rogue circle is down to four or five, which is weirdly fascinating. Now, one of these is a six, isn't it? Because we've got the six, seven, nine triple. And therefore it must, in either the row or the column that is summing column five or row five, it must go with a nine. So that is now a nine, as I suspected. And these are a seven, six pair. And they are pointing to arrows that contain only digits from one, two, three, four. And in each case, they must have the one and the two. It's either a, a one, two, three set there and one, two, four there, or vice versa. And... And these arrows don't contain one or two, but they add up to nine. Therefore, they're using the digits three, four, five, and six. Now, in one of these cases, this pair adds up to 16, and in the other, this pair adds up to 15. And yeah, that one, two, four. So one of these is a three, six pair, and one, two, three, the other is a four, five pair. Oh, the six can't go in the central box because there's a six, seven pair there already. The, oh, I'm spotting that. Don't worry, I'll come back to that. If the six is not there, it is in one of these, and the three that goes with it is in one of these, so not one of the outside bits. Now, this three, four, five triple is ruling three and four out of those cells, which are a one, two pair now. I'm just gonna get rid of the corner marks. Now, seven in this column cannot possibly go here because it's a three cell arrow. It would add up to at least 10 when you made these two different. So seven goes here. Seven in this row, I'm sure we can do the same. We can, we whack it here. Now that's exciting. Because again, we mustn't have the same digit here. So that's a one, two pair that can't see each other, but they are different. And that is an eight, nine pair because they do see each other and they have to be different. And then the number at the end of the column, remember this is either one, two, four there and three, six there leaving a five, or one, two, three there and four, five there leaving a six. So that's five or six, that's five or six. They are necessarily going to be a different version of five or six from each other, I believe. And then on their arrows, we now need two, two tiny digits from one, two, three. The six could go only with a one, two, making nine in the circles. The five could go with a one, two or a one, three, making eight in the circles. Oh no, that's amazing. This, this is gorgeous. These circles have to be different. I Right, the colouring palette is coming out in a moment. But I honestly don't know what to start it on, whether it's eights and nines or ones and twos or what. Right, why do I know these have to be different? Because these two are different. 
so here we go. Let's, let's color the eights and nines that I'm beginning to find. Red there and yellow there. That yellow sees that, so that's red. That red sees this, so it's yellow. That's why I know they're different. Now, hang on. I think I can take three out of these cells because one of these is an eight. Let's imagine red was an eight. Well, that's going to have to go with one, two, five. But the five is going to push that to be a six because of the the interplay between these sixes and sevens. That's amazing. The five is going to push that to be a six. And then that's going to force this to be a one, two, to make up the nine. So whichever way around that goes, these are one, two pairs. And now I'm going to color ones and twos because I'm, I'm, otherwise I just get overexcited. Right, let's color this one to start with. We'll go with bright green and purple. Purple there, bright green there. I may have started in entirely the wrong place. No, I haven't. One of these has to be a one or a two on this arrow. Not both of them because of that, but one of them. And the one that is, is green. So that's purple, that's green. There's a purple there. That's green, that's purple. This one is purple. And now, has that taught us anything? It teaches us there's a green in one of those two cells. There must be an equivalent purple, yes, in one of those two cells. There's a nine in one of those two, I've just noticed, in one of those two. And of course, nine is due to get a color, but I'm only coloring these reds and yellows for the contrast at the moment. Maybe I'll uncolor those in a moment. I don't know. I mean, yeah, okay. It's worth knowing that in these seven plus something equals something pairs, purple always goes with red. So they're either two and nine or they're one and eight and green always goes with yellow. And similarly, here, no. No, that's going to be a difference between three and four. Oh, this is going to get confusing. Oh, all of these are small, aren't they? Oh, that's interesting. They're, they obviously can't be more than four because we're adding up to no more than five here. I'm wondering if I can eliminate a 2-2 pair on either of those. Yes, I can. Of course I can. There's green and purple is used up here. That is not one or two. Same in box two. Green and purple have been used up. They are one and two. So these numbers are three and four. We're not going to get a 2-2 pair. That is a five now. So those don't have a five in. These do have a five in and now they don't have a four in. They're the bigger numbers. Now I'm very soon about to start coloring fives and sixes unless they just fall out. Anyway, five minus three or four leaves one or two. So here we are again with one and two. Now, can I color these? Ah, apparently not yet. Um, they're obviously not the same. Oh, this is so crazy. Oh, look. This, this is seeing a one, two, three, four quad. That is at least five. Now this has got a maximum difference between those two of four. So we get a fourth one, two, three, four in the row. Oh, maybe I should have done coloring that was all the load. I don't know. Oh, if I could sync it all up, I might do that. Anyway, we've got one, two, three, four here. So that is five or six, because that's coming to a circle that is six or seven. This is one or two. I know its color. It's purple. That's now purple. That's now green. Uh, green is there or there is. No, that's not purple or green. It's three or four. And that is one or two and is definitely purple. Um, and that's not green, that is. Right, now I'm colouring threes and fours. 
it's going to be a massive color puzzle anyway. Blue and gray for threes and fours. That's just random, but here we go. Gray, bright blue, gray, bright blue. And that is now not three or four because it sees both of them. Right, that is one or two. This can't be five anymore. Could still be six, but one or two gets a color. Now there's a green in one of those two. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a purple in one of those two. Um, oh, I've got so few full digits placed. This is, it's like a balancing act or a plate spinning routine somehow. Eight, no, I don't know what next. What next, guys? Don't tell me I'm colouring fives and sixes next. Although I might well be. Oh, this sees all of one, two, three, four. That's what next. Look at that. So this is big. This is, well, it's five or six. It also sees seven and an eight, nine pair. So that is five or six. <laughs> A pair of digits that I have not yet started colouring. This one... It's not one, it's two, three, or four, so it could still be purple. I suspect it's not purple just on symmetry grounds, because that would force this to be purple. And then I'd want to do the same thing here. In fact, can I do the same thing here? Look, yes I can. One, two, three, four. That is, it also sees seven, eight, nine. The symmetry is flawless. That is five or six. This is two, three or four in exactly the same way as that was. Okay, all I can say is they are not both two. Well, I can say it for a variety of reasons, but I'm mainly saying it because it would force both, it would force, well, it would make both green and purple blue. That, that's the most obvious thing. And they can't both be two. Now, I strongly suspect that neither of those is a two, but I'm not sure I can see why. If that was a two, this would be two, six, eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't work here, because you need an even digit here. This is either seven, one, eight or seven, two, nine. You're going to use either two or eight. So this cannot actually be, well, it can't be two, six, eight. So that's not a two, and that's not a two for the same reason in the column. They are three and four. They get colors that are not green and purple. This one is bright blue. This one is light gray. Um, I have a feeling that three, four coloring is not going to be useful. Anyway, how has that helped us? Yes, this is now purple. Yeah, I knew it had done something. This is green. This is not purple or green, and these two are the full purple and green. So let's put in ones and twos there. Now, there may be even more cells. There are. Look, here's another one, two, three, four um, quad. So that, which can't be five, seven, or nine, is definitely six or eight. Nine. We knew nine was up here somewhere. Seven, one, two. Uh, so the equivalent of that row, column is this row. So I bet I can do something. Oh no, but this has got this different arrow. Well, hang on. This is seven or eight. It sees one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that original shape I highlighted was all the low digits. Anyway, that also sees nine. So that is seven or eight. Um, and in this row, one of these is the blue three or four, and the other one is somewhere between, well, it's five, six, or eight. Oh, I mean, I'm tempted to say, where's seven in this row, and answer that it's in one of those two cells, but that doesn't, doesn't actually solve anything. Gosh, oh, yellow, oh, I want to put yellow there and say it's nine, but it could be there. 
and B8. Oh, it definitely could. Oh, I've still got to do more. Now, I've been finding one, two, three, four groups. So here's another one. One, two, three, four. Um, well, I'll tell you what, there's a nine. Where's nine in this column? It's in one of those two. Where's nine in row three? It's in one of those two. And the overlap is there, and that's a nine. That probably does nothing else in the puzzle, but it's a, quite a nice spot. Now, we've got the same sort of 628 problem here. What would that lead to? 628 there. It would make that a 7, and that a 4, and that a 3, and that a 2 which is the number it ought to be, so that's okay. These are from 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all done in this row. This is 6 or 8, very analogous to that cell. I don't know. I mean, is it something about the difference? This row, 9, 8 and 1, 2 are done. Sorry, I'm mishighlighting. And that's 7. Everything else is 3, 4, 5 or 6. Right. What is this? This is not grey or blue, so it's not 3 or 4. This is seeing everything in those, that row and that column. This is 5 or 6. And now it is time to colour 5s and 6s, probably. Although if I colour those ones, I, maybe that doesn't actually lead out of those boxes to other fives and sixes. Fives and sixes form pairs with grey and blue here in terms of adding up to nine. Well, and here, but I don't know. Oh, it's the same trick. It's the same trick as I pulled earlier on, which I found relatively easy for some reason to know that that these were one, two pairs because this was a five and six um, mutually exclusive pair, that they were five and six and that these were eight and nine. Why, for some reason, have I not noticed that because these are different three and four, and these are different eight, nine, that that has an impact on these cells. I think they both have to be five because one of these is a four. Let's say it was gray. Then that has to be a five and that has to be a nine. And that makes this an eight and this a three and that's a five again. So these two cells are always five. There is no six option. Six goes there, but I think I've just proved that that's not going to flow elsewhere in the grid. But it does. It flows into box two, where this has to be five, and that's going to disambiguate all the colours now and make our butterfly beautiful. I think it is, anyway. I'm not sure. It might not do ones and twos, but let's see what happens. Look, five's been ruled out of those because we got this five. So that's five. Five plus one and two is eight. Red is eight. Eight, not nine. Yellow is now nine. Yeah, this is going to do ones and twos because green has become two now on this arrow. Purple must therefore be one. That's made this arrow work. This arrow is going to need a six on it. This one is a six. Oh, but these are uncolored fives and sixes. No, that is incredibly helpful because now this is a four to make the nine total work. Three, six, so blue, bright blues are fours. Night greys are threes. Ah, oh, we're cleaning up now, surely. This one is done because its arrow is complete. That's a six. That's a five on the other arrow. That's a seven. These don't have a seven in, therefore the seven in the box is there. Yeah, this is still working. Four and eight. It is if I click the right keys. That's a nine. 
3 and 7 I can't place there, 4 and 5 I can't place in the first column, 3, 7, 6 there is going to leave a 4. Don't know how the 3, 6, 7 works yet. 8, 9, I do know how they work because of this. Let us get rid of... I mean, shall I get rid of the colouring? I'm not going to bother to colour all 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 and 9 in the grid. So I might as well get rid of everything at this point. I mean, that will disappoint the Lepidopterists amongst you. And indeed, I like a beautiful butterfly myself. But I think this is beautiful enough with the Sudoku without us having to colour the whole grid. I really do. This is so elegant. It's one of those puzzles that you just marvel at the idea of someone setting. And yet, Aspartagus has done it, and he's sent it to us to enjoy. And it's such a privilege to get that. It really is. It's so brilliant. That's a six on the arrow, and that's an eight. I mean, it's one of those puzzles where you just know you've solved it the intended way from the beauty that you've experienced while doing it. I think Paul Dirac, the physicist, said something along the lines of, you know an equation's right when it's beautiful. And the same is true about the solution path there. And there we go. That is correct. 200 people in the last month or so. I hope there'll be more by the time you've finished solving it, because that puzzle deserves to be seen. It is so elegant. It's so clever. It's just top quality. Top quality. Great fun. Thank you very much, Aspartagus. And uh, thank you for watching. And please post a comment to say that my praise is not overdone on this puzzle, because I demand that you agree with me. It's excellent. Thank you. Oh, and... If you want more Arrow Sudoku, and why wouldn't you after that, get our Arrow Sudoku app and uh, try the puzzles by some of the great constructors in there, even a few by us, and uh, you will enjoy them. So follow the links to under, under the, in the description field to the apps, and um, there are a number of apps there, and of course our merchandise and spend Sudoku pad. Thank you for watching as always. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.